Hello friends. So welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So today we discuss about diagonalization. What do we mean by diagonalization of a matrices? So let us discuss. Now first of all before starting diagonalization let us discuss similar matrices. So let A and B be two square matrices of order n over a field F. Then A is said to be similar to B if there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equal to P inverse AP and we symbolically write uh, A is uh, similar to B like this. Okay. So, uh, what, what do you mean by basically uh, two similar matrices? So, we say that uh, a matrix A, okay, a matrix A is similar to B if there exists an invertible matrix, invertible matrix P such that A P is equal to P B or B is equal to P inverse A P. Okay. So, one thing is very uh, like uh, uh, obvious from this fact. So, uh, what, what is that? That determinant of B and determinant of A are equal. This is very clear from here. You can see that determinant of B will be determinant of P inverse A P and that will be equal to determinant of P inverse, determinant of A, determinant of P. Since determinant of A into B is equal to determinant of A into determinant of B. Now determinant of P inverse is 1 upon determinant of P into determinant of A into determinant of P. So these two cancels out, so it is equal to determinant of A. So what we obtain? The first property of similar matrices is that if two matrices A and B are similar, then their determinant are always equal. This is the first property of similar matrices. The second property is that if two matrices are similar, then they have same eigenvalues. Okay. So, how can we prove this? So, if A is similar to B, this means, uh, this means implies there exist P such that uh, A a p is equal to p b or a is equal to p b p inverse. Okay. If a is similar to b. Now, we have the second property we have to show that uh, if two matrices are similar then they have same eigenvalues. So, how we can proceed for this? Suppose a x equal to lambda x where x is not equal to 0. So, what does it mean? This means that A has an eigenvalue lambda and the corresponding eigenvector is x. Okay. Now, since A is similar to B, that means A is equal to P B P inverse. So, you can replace A by P B P inverse. Okay. Now, this implies B into P inverse x, this we can easily write. You uh, uh, pre multiplied both the sides by p inverse because p is invertible. So, it is p inverse of lambda x and this implies b into p inverse x is equal to lambda times p inverse x okay, because lambda is a scalar can be taken out. Now, this p inverse x you can suppose uh, let uh, this p inverse x is uh, y suppose then this is b y equal to lambda y. So, what we have concluded? We have concluded that B matrix has an eigenvalue lambda and the corresponding eigenvector is y. In order to prove that y is an eigenvector, you have to show that y is not equal to 0 of course. So, that is that is very easy to show. Uh, suppose uh, y is equal to 0, we can prove this by contradiction. If y is equal to 0, that means p inverse x equal to 0. Now, x is not equal to 0 x is not equal to 0 from here because it is an eigenvector and uh, this matrix is invertible. This is a system of uh, linear equations okay. and system of linear equation with uh, this matrix is invertible that means only unique solution which is x equal to 0, but x is not equal to 0. So, it is a contradiction okay. because, because from here it implies that x equal to 0 which contradicts 
that uh, x is not equal to 0. Hence, y is not equal to 0. Because, because whenever we write such expression that b y equal to lambda y, if y is not equal to 0, then only we can say that the eigenvalue is lambda and the corresponding eigenvector is y. Okay. So, what we have concluded basically, we have taken uh, a matrix A with eigenvalue lambda and the corresponding eigenvector x and using the property of uh, similar matrices, we have shown that uh, a matrix B has the same eigenvalue lambda and the corresponding eigenvector is y. Okay. So, so, we can say that similar matrices have same eigenvalues. Of course, their eigenvector may not be same. If x is an eigenvector cross point to lambda here for A, then uh, corresponding to uh, lambda for B, the eigenvector is y, which is p inverse x. Now, if they have same eigenvalues, this clearly shows that the characteristic polynomial of similar matrices are same, since roots are same. If roots are same, eigenvalues are same, that means characteristic polynomial of matrix A and B, which are similar to each other are also same. Okay. Now, since they have same eigenvalues, that means the trace of the two matrices are also same. Trace is nothing but sum of eigenvalues. Now, if the similar matrices are same eigenvalues, that means sum of eigenvalues are also same and this implies that uh, trace of two matrices are also equal. Okay. So, what we have concluded? We have concluded that if two matrices A and B are similar, then their determinant are also are equal, then uh, their trace is uh, trace of the two matrices are equal, trace of A is equal to trace of B, where A and B are similar matrices. They have the same characteristic polynomial and hence they have the same characteristic, same characteristic roots or eigenvalues. Okay. Eigenvectors may not be same. Okay. So, uh, uh, this, these are what they are in this uh, properties, you can easily see. Uh, if two matrices represent the same linear operator, if and only if the matrices are similar, number 1. If matrices are similar, then the uh, linear operators are also same or they have, if they have the same linear operator, then the matrices are similar. If A and B are similar matrices, then determinant are equal, trace are equal, same characteristic polynomial and same eigenvalues. This we have already discussed. However, eigenvector cross point to an eigenvalue for a similar matrix A and B may, may be different. In fact, if x is an eigenvector cross point to an eigenvalue lambda of a matrix A, then P inverse x will be the eigenvector corresponding to lambda for the matrix B. Okay, this we have already discussed. Now, let us discuss one example. Suppose A is this matrix and B is this matrix. Okay. Then A and B are similar. How, how we have concluded this? Uh, this is very easy to conclude basically. If, uh, if you have two matrices A and B, any, any two matrices A and B, okay. you have to check whether these two matrices are similar, uh, similar or not. So, you basically uh, take arbitrary matrix P such that A P is equals to uh, P B. Okay. It here, here A and B are two cross two matrices. So, you can take P as uh, A B C D. Then you can solve the left hand side, you can solve the right hand side okay. and uh, you will get uh, four equations in four unknowns you can find A, B, C, D and if you find A, B, C, D such that this matrix P is invertible that is uh, A, D minus B, C is not equal to 0 that clearly means matrix A and B are similar because we have shown the existence of such P such that uh, such invertible P such that A, P equal to P, B. So, here also, here also you can you can find uh, such P which we are getting as this, you can easily verify here that uh, B equal to P inverse AP. So, we can say that uh, these two matrices are similar. You can also verify here, you can see the trace is 10, here the trace is also 10, here the determinant is 24 minus 6, 24 plus 6, 30 and here also if you simplify, you will get 30 the determinant of P because they are similar. Now, in terms of linear operator, 
what do you mean by diagonalizability? So, if T is a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space V, then we say that T is diagonalizable if there exists a basis for V, each vector of which is a characteristic vector of T. So, what does it mean? It means that uh, there exists a basis S which is given by u1, u2 up to un of v for which t of u1 equal to lambda 1 u1. It is something like a x equals to lambda x. You we already know that every linear transformation correspond to a matrix with respect to some basis. So, if, the, if this is a basis and so t of u1 will be lambda 1 u1, t of u2 will be lambda 2 u2 and so on t and un will be lambda and un. Then, T is represented by a diagonal matrix D which is given by this. So, what does it mean? We will discuss later on by taking an example of matrices. So, the linear operator T is diagonalizable if the matrix representation of T that we already know that every linear transformation represent a matrix. Okay. So, if a linear transformation, if a matrix representation of uh, a linear operator T is similar to a diagonal matrix D, then we say that T is diagonalizable. Uh, that clearly means that the matrix rep representation of T is similar to D, that means there exists an invertible matrix P again such that such that matrix representation of T is equal to P D P inverse. So, so what we have concluded? We have concluded suppose we have a matrix A which is a matrix correspond to a linear operator, matrix representation of a linear operator T. Then we say that this matrix is diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix D. D is a diagonal matrix, okay. diagonal D1, D2 up to Dn, if A is n cross n matrix. Okay. It is similar to a diagonal matrix means means there exists an invertible matrix P, okay, invertible matrix P such that A P is equal to uh, P D or uh, A is equals to P D P inverse. Now, we know that eigenvalues of A and eigenvalues of uh, its similar matrices are eigenvalues of similar matrices are same this we have already proved. Okay. So, and it is a diagonal matrix and the eigenvalues of diagonal matrix are nothing but the diagonal elements itself. So, we can say that, uh, that uh, here the diagonal elements of this D are nothing but eigenvalues of A. That means, if uh, A has an eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n then this d will be nothing but lambda 1 0 0 0 0 lambda 2 0 0 0 and 0 up to lambda n because similar matrices have same eigenvalues. Okay. Now, if uh, characteristic polynomial p lambda of t or of a is a product of n distinct linear factors like this lambda a minus a 1 all have a power 1 all have a power 1, then T is always diagonalizable. If, if it is a distinct uh, uh, linear factors and all have a power 1 in the characteristic polynomial, then T is or matrix is always diagonalizable. Now, let us discuss algebraic and geometric multiplicity of a uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector. So, what does it mean? Let us discuss. Okay. Suppose, suppose A is a 5 cross 5 matrix and its, its characteristic polynomial is suppose lambda minus 1, lambda minus square cube and lambda minus uh, lambda plus 1 say ok. So, it is 3 plus uh, 2 is 5. Now, corresponding to lambda equal to 1, there is only one factor. So, we can we say that algebraic multiplicity for lambda equal to 1 is 1. Algebraic multiplicity means number of times that lambda repeats this lambda equal to 1 is repeating only one time. So, algebraic multiplicity corresponding to lambda equal to 1 is 1. Now, this lambda equal to 2 is repeating 3 times. So, we say that algebraic multiplicity corresponding to lambda equal to 2 is 3. 
again this lambda lambda equal to minus 1 is repeating one time. So, we can say that algebraic multiplicity for lambda equal to minus 1 is 1. So, algebraic multiplicity cross point to a lambda is nothing but number of times that lambda repeats. Okay. Now, cross point to this lambda lambda equal to 1 or lambda equal to 2 suppose lambda equal to 2 cross point lambda equal to 2 number of linearly linearly independent Eigen vectors are suppose k of course, k will be less than equal to 3. Okay. Now, suppose uh, number of linearly independent Eigen vectors cross point to this lambda equal to 2 are k. So, this k is called geometric multiplicity for lambda equal to 2 geometric multiplicity corresponding to lambda equal to 2. So, geometric multiplicity is nothing but number of linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to a lambda. Okay. Now, geometric multiplicity which is gm cross point to a lambda is always less than equal to algebraic multiplicity cross point to that lambda. It cannot be more than this. Now, since, since lambda equal to 1 is repeating one time. So, what is the algebraic multiplicity for lambda equal to 1 is 1 okay, for lambda equal to 1 for this particular uh, example. So, g m for lambda equal to 1 will be less than equal to 1. So, g m will be 1 only it cannot be 0 there there is at least one linearly independent Eigen vector cross point to a lambda. Okay. So, so that means if a uh, if a lambda is repeating only one time. So, number of linearly independent Eigen vector cross point that lambda will be 1 only. Now, here for lambda equal to 2 algebraic multiplicity is 3. So, what should be the geometric multiplicity? Geometric multiplicity will be less than equal to 3 because by this uh, property we can say that for lambda equal to 2 geometric multiplicity for lambda equal to 2 will be less than equal to algebraic multiplicity which is 3. So, geometric multiplicity of for cross point lambda equal to 2 either is 1, 2 or 3 and for lambda equal to minus 1 geometric multiplicity is my uh, is 1. Okay. Now, what is the sufficient condition by which we can surely say that a matrix is diagonalizable or not because finding such p always for a bigger matrix say 10 cross 10 or 5 cross 5 is not an easy task. So, what should be a sufficient condition by which we can surely say seeing a matrix that whether it is diagonalizable or not. So, what is that condition let us discuss here. So, this is a this is an example you see here is 7 cross 7 matrix here it is lambda minus 2 lambda minus 3 whole square lambda plus 5 whole square 4. So, for lambda equal to 1 algebraic multiplicity is 1 for lambda equal to 3 algebraic multiplicity is 2 for lambda equal to minus 5 algebraic multiplicity is 4. Geometric multiplicity is simply number of linear independent Eigen vector associated with a with it. So, that is it is a dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i. How it is we will discuss uh, uh, by an example. So, this we have already seen that uh, geometric multiplicity of an Eigen value lambda does not exceed its algebraic multiplicity number 1. Now, a matrix is diagonalizable if and only if geometric multiplicity corresponding to each lambda is same as its algebraic multiplicity. Okay. That means, if uh, geometric multiplicity corresponding to each lambda i is equal to algebraic multiplicity then only matrix will be diagonalizable. So, this is a sufficient condition or we can say that if a matrix uh, has an order n then it will be diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent Eigen vectors because, because corresponding to each lambda geometric multiplicity equal to algebraic multiplicity number of number of uh, number of linearly number of uh, Eigen values are total n. So, it must have n linearly independent Eigen vector if matrix is diagonalizable otherwise it is it will not be diagonalizable. So, let us discuss these two examples quickly and from here we can analyze each and everything. So, what is the first example? The first example is you see a is given to us as 3 minus 1 1, 7 minus 5 1, 6 minus 6 2. 
eigen values which is given to us are 2 minus 4 and x okay it is given to us or we can find out the eigen values by finding the characteristic polynomial of this matrix now how we can find out x x we can find out because uh, the sum of eigen values is equal to trace of a and trace of a is simply 3 minus 5 plus 2 okay so it will be x minus 2 will be equal to it is uh, 5 minus 5 0 that is x equal to 2 so what are the eigen values of uh, this a eigen values of a will be 2 2 minus 4 because x is 2 so what is the algebraic multiplicity of 2 is 2 and what is the algebraic multiplicity of minus 4 is 1 corresponding to lambda equal to minus 4 geometric multiplicity will be 1 only because geometric multiplicity is always less than equals to algebraic multiplicity now corresponding to lambda equal to 2 if geometric multiplicity is equal to 2 then only this matrix will be diagonalizable if it is less than 2 that is 1 then this matrix is not diagonalizable not diagonalizable means there uh, we, there does not exist any d such that a is similar to d okay there does not exist any p such that uh, ap equal to pd so let us find eigen vector corresponding lambda equal to 2 so uh, eigen vector for lambda equal to 2 so how you will find it a minus lambda i x equal to 0 this implies lambda is 2 so put it 2 this implies what is a minus 2 i it is 1 minus 1 1 it is uh, 7 minus 7 1 okay it is 6 minus 6 and 0 times x is means x1 x2 x3 if 0 means 0 0 0 now you can uh, it is 1 minus 1 1 you can uh, take one operation that is this minus 7 times this is 0 this minus 7 times this is 0 this minus 7 times this is minus 6 this minus 6 times this is 0 this minus 6 times this is 0 this minus 6 times this is minus 6 and this minus uh, this minus this row will give 0 here we are trying to make a cleon form of this so what we have obtained from here it is x1 minus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 and minus 6 x3 equal to 0 so this implies x3 equal to 0 if you substitute x3 equal to 0 here so we obtain x1 equal to x2 so how many linearly independent eigen vector corresponding lambda equal to 2 it is only one which is uh, x1 x1 0 or 1 1 0 you take any one linearly independent eigen vector which is you, you say 1 1 0 so so it is uh, only 1 1 0 only one that is geometric multiplicity corresponding to lambda equal to 2 is 1 it should be 2 for diagonalizability so we can say that this matrix a is not diagonalizable so how we can how we can check you see you see we have find the null space of this basically a minus lambda i we have basically finding all these things means we have find uh, null space of this matrix a minus 2 i okay or we can say that if r is the rank of the you see rank of this matrix is 2 okay and number of unknowns are 3 or order of matrix is 3 so 3 minus uh, 2 is 1 and 1 is the number of linear independent eigen vectors so that means if r is the rank of a minus lambda i and n is the uh, n is the order of a then n minus r will be the geometric multiplicity corresponding to that lambda and if it is equal to geometric uh, if it is equal to algebraic multiplicity for each lambda then only matrix will be diagonalizable okay now you can see here you can see a second example here here a is 4 1 minus 1 2 5 minus 2 1 1 2 
and here eigen values are 3, 3 and lambda. Let us see whether it is diagonalizable or not and if yes what will be p and how we can find the other expressions in this problem. Okay. So, this is the problem let us let us try to find it quickly. So, the sum of Eigen values again is equal to trace of a. So, lambda will be it is 9 plus 2 11, 11 minus 6 that is 5. So, we can say that Eigen values of uh, this uh, a is are 3, 3 and 5. So, we will find uh, we will find uh, um, number of linear independent Eigen vector corresponding lambda equal to 3. First, we will check. Okay. So, for lambda equal to 3. So, for lambda equal to 3 it is a minus 3 i times x equal to 0 and this implies uh, 1, 1 minus 1, 2, uh, 2 minus 2 and it is 1, 1 minus 1 x equal to 0. So, when we convert uh, into its equilion forms we can easily see that it is 2 times this and it is 1 times this. So, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 x equal to 0. So, what is the rank of this matrix? Rank is 1 and what is the order of the matrix is 3, 3 minus 1 that is 2 that means 2 is the geometric multiplicity cross point to lambda equal to 3. So, yes because algebraic multiplicity is 2 and geometric multiplicity is also 2 for lambda equal to 5 it is 1 only. So, that means this matrix is diagonalizable. Okay. So, what are what are those two vectors? x 1 plus x 2 minus x 3 equal to 0. So, we can and to pick any two arbitrary uh, linear independent Eigen vector satisfying this equation. So, we can take x 1 as uh, 1 minus 1 0 because 1 minus 1 0 is satisfying this and x 2 as 1 0 1 and these two are linear independent. Is it okay? Because 1 minus 1 0 satisfying this and 1 0 1 also satisfying this and these two are linear independent. So, yes they will uh, they will form the uh, entire Eigen space. Okay. Now, cross point lambda equal to 5. For lambda equal to 5 again we can find out a minus i times x equal to 0 and when we simplify it is minus 1, 1 minus 1 it is 2, 0 minus 2 and it is 1, 1 minus 3 x equal to 0 and when you simplify this you will get x as x as uh, 1 to 1. You can find this equilion form and then you what vector you find is this vector. So, how you can find out p because it is diagonalizable now we have ensured that uh, that this matrix is diagonalizable. So, how we can find out that p. So, to find p to find p uh, how we can find out p we simply write first x x 1 vector here x 2 vector here x 3 Eigen vector here. So, what is the x 1 Eigen vector? x 1 Eigen vector we have already find 1 minus 1 0 x 2 is 1 0 1 and 1 2 1. This will be that p and it is always invertible because uh, Eigen vectors are linearly independent. Okay. So, it is always in the, uh, invertible. Okay. So, what will be its p inverse? So, p inverse you can easily find out and the p inverse uh, which you can uh, find will be 2 0 minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 3 1 1 minus 1 this you can find out the p inverse. Now, a p so a p will be equal to p d p d and this implies a is equals to p d p inverse. So, and what is d here d will be nothing but uh, what is the first Eigen vector? First Eigen vector is uh, this x and this is cross point to lambda equal to this cross point lambda equal to 3. Okay. So, here you can write first is 0, 3, 0, 0, 0. The second Eigen vector is cross point to again lambda equal to 3, c. Okay. So, it is 3, 0 and the third Eigen vector is cross point to 5, so it is 5. Now, suppose if you want to find out a square, say a square is nothing but a into a which is equals to p d p inverse into p d p inverse and this is nothing but p d p inverse p into d into p inverse. So, it is uh, p d square p inverse that means uh, a square is also diagonalizable. Okay. 
Similarly, if you proceed like this, so what is a raised to power k? It is p d raised to power k into p inverse. Suppose you want to find out a raised to power 10. So, it is p d raised to power 10 into p inverse. And what is d raised to power 10? It is 3 raised to power 10, 0, 0, 0, 3 raised to power 10, 0, 0, 0, 5 raised to power 10. P you know, P inverse you know, D, D raised to power 10 you know. So, simply multiplication of these 3 matrices will give you A raised to power 10, which is otherwise you have to find out A raised to power 10 by 10 matrix multiplication. Suppose you want to find A raised to power 50, similarly you can find out A raised to power 50 also. P D ratio of 50 into P inverse similarly by the matrix multiplication of these 3. Okay. Now, suppose suppose you want to find out E raised to power A, it is I plus A plus A square by 2 factorial and so on. Okay. So, if you multiply uh, P uh, you see here, here it is uh, A equal to P D P inverse. Okay. So, here a equal to a is equal to p d p inverse. So, if you uh, if you take uh, p inverse e raise to power p into p, so this will be p inverse p plus p inverse a p upon factorial 1 plus p inverse a square p upon factorial 2 and so on. And this is uh, identity plus uh, it is uh, d because a is invertible I mean a is diagonalizable and it is d square upon factorial 2 as we have already discussed. So, it is e raise to power d. So, what we have concluded that e raise to power a is nothing but uh, p e raise to power d into p inverse and how p is p we know p inverse we know how we can find uh, e raise to power d e raise to power d is nothing but uh, i plus uh, d upon factorial 1 plus d square upon factorial 2 and so on. Uh, d is uh, nothing but here it is lambda 1 0 0 0 lambda 2 0 0 0 lambda 3. Okay. Hey, here lambda 2 and lambda 2 are 3 and lambda 3 is 5 for this particular problem. Okay. Now, square will be lambda 1 square 0 0 0 lambda 2 square 0, 0, 0 lambda 3 cube square upon factorial 2 and so on. So, when you club all these terms, so it is uh, the first term is 1 plus lambda 1 upon factorial 1, lambda 1 square upon factorial 2, lambda 1 cube upon factorial 3 and so on, which is nothing but e raised to power lambda 1. Second term is 0 throughout, this is 0, this is again e raised to power lambda 2, 0, 0, 0 e raised to power lambda 3. So, e raised to power d we can simply find out e raised to power lambda 1 0 0 0 e raised to power lambda 2 0 0 0 e raised to power lambda 3. So, in this case e raised to power lambda e raised to power d will be what e raised to power 3 0 0 0 e raised to power 3 0 0 0 e raised to power 5. So, hence we can find out e raised to power a also e raised to power of a matrix by simply multiplying these three matrices. Similarly, if you want to find out sin a sign of a matrix, this is a matrix not an angle, that also we can find out using the same uh, uh, derivation, same lines following the same lines. Similarly, cos of a matrix, this also we can find out. So, these are some of the applications of diagonalizability. If a matrix is diagonalizable, we can easily find out higher powers of A by the multiplication of only 3 matrices, e raised to power A or sin a, cos a or other expressions of the similar types. So, uh, in this lecture we have seen that uh, when a matrix is diagonalizable, what are the important properties of diagonalizability and what are the some, some applications of uh, diagonal matrices. Thank you.